Our service begins in our worship bulletin. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from, from of old, nor will it be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind, behind him, <clears throat> a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a feast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Let us say together Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his way known to Moses and his work to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting up no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. 
but as servants of God, we have commanded ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known as dying. And see, we are alive as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Jesus said, Whoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Please be seated. Today's sermon is written by the Reverend Kirk Allen Kubik, a 40-year-old, a 40-year priest currently serving in a small but mighty parish in Maryland. I think you'll see why this sermon from this congregation appealed to me for our Ash Wednesday service together. The Ash Wednesday liturgy is possibly the most meaningful liturgy in our Book of Common Prayer. It offers us an opportunity to stop, reflect on who we are and whose we are, adopt an attitude of humility, hit the reset button, and begin again. We are invited to stop the whirlwind of life and activities that surround us on all sides 
And remember, God hates nothing God has made. God forgives the sins of all who are penitent. Our God is the God of all mercy, perfect remission, and forgiveness. As if all of this in the opening collect is not enough, the reminder that we are dust and to dust we shall return ought to put our life in Christ into a proper perspective of humility. This is made visible and tangible with the imposition of ashes from last year's Palm Sunday branches, which seem to retrace the baptismal cross on our foreheads as a reminder of our promises. It's a reminder of the promises we make each time we renew our baptismal covenant to participate in the full life of the body of Christ, his church, to say we are sorry whenever we have violated our relationships with God and others, that everything we do and say will proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, that we will seek and serve Christ in all persons, that we will strive for justice and peace for all people and respect the dignity of every human being. As, mother, uh, as a Mother Michelle addition to this sermon, these are the very promises, these baptismal promises, that we will be studying over the next five Sundays and five Wednesdays. The church has long recognized how challenging it is to keep these core promises that constitute walking in the way of Christ. That is why we set aside these 40 days each year for self-examination and repentance, for prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and to read and meditate on God's holy word. The ashes of Ash Wednesday remind us not only of our mortality and need for regular repentance, but that it is also only God's gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ. Although we are to remember that we are dust and to dust we shall return, we ought never to forget that we are holy dust created and inspired by the very breath and spirit of God, as described in Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God formed man, in Hebrew that word is hadam, from the dust of the ground, in Hebrew that word is ha'adam ah, and breathed into his nostrils the, life, the breath of life, and the man became a living being. In these days, as we reflect on our relationship to the earth itself, the Hebrew reminds us just how interconnected and interdependent we really are. Adam, man, is made of the dust of the ground, Adam of. Just as Moses was reminded by the burning bush that he was standing on the holy ground, so the ashes of Ash Wednesday remind us that Everywhere we stand, everywhere we walk, every speck of dust is holy ground, and that we are made holy from the moment of our very first breath. Receiving these ashes is meant to remind us of these humbling and defining truths. Next to the cross itself, however, there is no more tender and revealing moment in God's holy word than that proclaimed on Ash Wednesday by the prophet Joel, who in days of great darkness and gloom calls the people of God to a solemn assembly to pray for their deliverance. Yet amid this call to return to the Lord with all our hearts, the prophet reminds us of God's very essence and then imagines just how much the Lord our God loves us. He says... Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Do you hear this? 
when we are enveloped with such darkness and gloom that we are unable to make the appointed sacrifices to God, unable to turn our hearts and minds back to God on our own. The prophet imagines that the Lord God himself will make the appointed sacrifices himself. Leaving that grain offering and a drink offering on your behalf, which offerings constitute the essence of our Holy Communion. We are those people who, like the prophet, can imagine that God enters our lives and leaves an offering and a blessing for us every Sunday. Because our God is the God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, who relents from punishing. This realization of God's love and care for us brings us to our knees and into a litany of repentance in which we rehearse all of the possible ways in which we stray from the way of the Lord God, in which we stray from the way of Christ. It is after this remarkable and thorough confession that the reset button is pressed and we are forgiven by the Almighty God, the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to see his eternal joy. Ash Wednesday. It's a day to stop, reflect on who we are and whose we are, adopt an attitude of humility, and hit the reset button of our life in Christ. It's a day to remember that we are dust, but that we are holy dust, animated by God's own breath. For it is God's own spirit that enlivens and sustains us day in and day out. A day to remember that God loves us so much as to make sacrifices for us when we are unable to do so for ourselves. A day to allow God in Christ to forgive us so that we might live the residue of our lives reflecting the very love that God has for us and for all of creation. A day that we may remind ourselves with great humility to love God love all others, and love all creation itself. For that is exactly what it means to be the holy dust of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faith body of the faithful, were recon reconciled by penitence and forgiveness, and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior, and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer.
Almighty God, thou hast created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we remember that it is only by the gracious gift that we are given everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you wish to receive the imposition of ashes, I ask that you um, step forward in a line here, and we will do that right here. Let us say together Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your loving kindness, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from any sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak, and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you will look for truth deep within me, and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy in your eyes. The body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit upon me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. 
Had, Had you desired it, I would, would have offered sacrifices. But, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The, the sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, will you not despise. Be favorable and gracious to Zion, and reveal the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with the appointed sacrifices, with the burnt offerings and oblations. Then you shall offer young bulls upon your altar. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to thee and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to thy call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved thy Holy Spirit. We confess to thee, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to thee, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to thee, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our for our waste and pollution of thy creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Our Restore us, good Lord, and let thy anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for thy mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of thy salvation. That we may show forth thy glory in the world. By the cross and passion of thy Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who do truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us share the peace. Please be seated. Just two short announcements. Um, beginning next Wednesday, we will start our practice of Stations of the Cross, Soup Supper, and study of the book, Will You?, which is a book based on our baptismal covenant. Please plan on joining us Wednesdays at 5.30, beginning next Wednesday. And second, just a reminder that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion today. We serve in three stations. Bread, wine from the common cup, wine from individual cups. If you'd like to come forward to receive, we start over here. 
If you'd like to come forward for a blessing only, just cross your arms over your chest and I'll be happy to offer you a blessing. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we were able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Holy Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, 
having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And may earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching me to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him.
Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, the world without end. Amen. Let us bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 